And we're back. Hello, everyone. For the review of Canvas with Gal. Hi, everyone. Woo. All right. So um, we, we just, just finished. Yep. Yeah, we just finished a uh, playthrough of Canvas. Congratulations, Gal. Thank you. Thank you. Crushed us. Crushed us. Uh, nice yes. Um, and uh, links down below for the uh, uh, for the overview if you want to learn the rules, as well as the extended playthrough if you want to watch the whole game uh, till the end. Which isn't a lot to watch. Like, yeah, it's very short. Yeah. This is a short game and short videos, but it was fun, so mm -hmm. uh, join us. Yeah. All right, so let's start with uh, arts and components. So obviously arts are... Uh... <laughs> arts in the arts game yes. that's very artsy is very cute i really like the way they look the the final product looks unique and there's this cute naming scheme and it's it's nice it's it doesn't add much depth to mm -hmm. anything yeah but it is very 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 nice and this little mat even mm -hmm. though i would have been happy if it wasn't pure cloth mm -hmm. like would have preferred something out of cardboard but it does make the game a lot more uh like you can take it places yeah. you can take it to a picnic with your family yeah like this is fairly durable they, these aren't mm -hmm. the usual cardboard cards right. you'd be playing with if mm -hmm. someone spit if a child spilled something on it you wouldn't be upset. It's very easy to clean. It, I understand why it was done the way it is. Like this is supposed to be very child friendly, and it is. Yeah. So what All do right. you think about the arts? Yeah. The arts are the art and components. So I, uh, yeah, I think I mean the the card component uh, quality is uh, is very high. I mean the the rule book itself is uh, is finished also. Um, so that's very it's cute. Finished. It's like uh, it has a finish to it. I don't remember the exact you term. Have the box here. You yeah, can, I'll take it out in a second. You can fondle it yeah. in front of our viewers so they can uh, experience it through you. All Ooh, right. We can do ASMR rule books. Let's. That's a. That's. Check out the other channel for that. <laughs> um, I think that in terms of uh, usability, mm -hmm. uh, I think they did a very good job. I mean, a rather good job, I would say. First of all, the. Rules for every card on the other side, so it makes it very. This is fantastic. Very easy. I forgot it, and so I looked up the and rules you for were those. Like, why didn't they have yeah. it in the manual? Oh, the rules are on the other side because that's very... a better idea, and everyone should uh, do something yeah. similar. Yep. Um, and also, I want to mention that the colors themselves are colorblind friendly because they have different shapes, mm -hmm. so you can sort of match. The, okay, this is blue, and this is red, and they don't look exactly the same. Um, in terms of shape, so that's very good as well. And um, do you want to mention anything else? No, I think uh, yeah, I think it's a it's a very well produced game for what it is. Oh, and I didn't want to mention the lovely lovely box, uh, which um, surprisingly doesn't have a name on it. Yeah. It's supposed to be a painting, and they even added the extra. They went the extra mile of actually having this little um, nail. Uh, opening for the, yeah, no for the box so that you could do that. literally uh, put it on your wall. Yeah, no one's gonna do that, but it's cute that they went with the theme. Yeah. What do you think, Gal? What do you think about the art and components? So, I'm pretty new to board games, but I find this whole experience pretty colorful. Yep. I mean, just making the painting, uh, even if it doesn't score a lot of points, it's just fun because yeah. of what you actually, like the result that you get. Mm -hmm. um, the components themselves are pretty, um, I mean, as you said, durable, but they're also pretty fine. I mean, the color palettes are, are nice and the ribbons are nice. Um, and I do believe that you're the kind of couple that can put the box on your wall. So if anyone can do that. I was deeply offended. <laughs> deeply yeah. offended by that insinuation. Shots have been fired. I don't know. I feel like it'd go well with this painting. Yeah, maybe. It's a very colorful painting that yes. will never be seen because yes. this side of the room does not exist. Yes. Yeah. All right. So uh, what do you think about the game mechanisms, the gameplay itself? Well, uh, be prepared that this is not a deep game. Yep. This is, it's just not. It's not what mm -hmm. it's going for, and it is not a deep game. It's very quick. It's very cute. I think it's aimed for a younger audience, casual audience. Maybe if you have, like, kids that are, what, 8 to 12 that you want to get into the The box hobby. is uh, 14 and up. <laughs> I... 
I don't know. That's what the box says. I know eight years old did play Baron Park, and this is like yeah. half the complexity. Yeah. So yeah, that's I don't true. know. I'd put this a bit lower than Potion Explosion when mm -hmm. it comes to yeah to complexity. That's true. So fourteen and up is uh, it's too high. Yeah, it's definitely too high. If you have younger kids that you think will like the colors and uh, the mechanisms, then this is great. But just don't. Don't expect anything much. I like the fact that the scoring changes from game to game. And I really like that the manual explains how you should do the distribution. Like the manual says you should have two goals for shape and... Position. Other, and yeah. goals for position, which is very nice because uh, it could very easily... If it were purely random, mm -hmm. you could very easily get competing goals. And that would ruin the fun since optimizing means getting yeah. free medals from free mm -hmm. paintings mm -hmm. so very nice just you know very light this is not a game that i would uh take out out of my own volition this is yeah. something that the people who are coming over would would be suited for and then i'd take it out because it's too light and there's there's just not enough depth yep i also feel like i would have been happy if there were a bit more luck mitigation okay mm -hmm. I'm like, like flashing out the cards. I'm, I'm not sure exactly. Mm -hmm. Maybe, you know, just a removal of a card or maybe just having an additional card and having the first two mm -hmm. free, like, like some way, because we played this several times mm -hmm. and yeah. in a lot of the games I felt like, oh, well, if I only had the chance to get an additional yellow because there are no yellows yep. or no reds or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then I would have been, because the score margin is very low. Mm -hmm. So having bad luck is yep. pretty much will lose you the game. Which is true for a lot of games, but here it feels a yeah. bit more... Uh, okay. Okay. So I can mention... Yeah. Yes. So I can mention that, uh, uh, first of all, in terms of... Um, um, of a number of players and variants and so on, so uh, it goes from one to five. So it it, uh, it goes all the way to five players, which is interesting. And I think that perhaps in five players or in four players to, to, for the same, uh, um, you know, for that matter, the cards will move a lot more. And then perhaps, you know, you'll just get to see more cards. Yeah, that and could because be. Because these sort of get stuck, right? Uh, at a few rounds, those two got stuck. So you see less cards. I don't know. Yeah, That's... these inspiration tokens mm -hmm. aren't that useful. So if you have like yeah. a pile of them on one of them, right? like in, in Firenze, you'd be like, oh, this one has yeah. 13 bricks. I can do stuff with 13 bricks That's even true. if I don't need them. Mm -hmm. Here you don't really have that. Yep. And they also mentioned that, um, you know, if you want to make the game even lighter, again, for kids, for, for some reason, you can just remove some goals. And now you're playing just with two goals. Um, so just to make things easier. Uh, but again, I, I think that uh, you're right in the sense that um, there are combinations that will be, let's say, less challenging and combinations that will be more challenging. If and you, you can choose them. And you can freely choose them. Yes, that's true. I think that the expansion is cute. I mean, it doesn't really add a lot. Uh, but I think it's that the... It's nice to have. It's not mandatory. In it's not way. mandatory in any way. Yep. Um, but I do want to mention that there are a lot of uh, goal cards and a lot of these extra goal cards. So... Um, you know, you don't, you won't feel, uh, there's a, some um, amount of variance, not a lot, but some amount of variance, so games don't feel exactly the same. And uh, yeah, I mean, taking the cards and trying to find combinations and also trying to pile the cards in, because you do have control over which card goes on top and which mm -hmm. icons are, get, are getting uh, covered by which other cards, uh, which makes an interesting decision, right? Mm -hmm. uh, challenging. And, but you know, at the end of the day, I agree with you that it sort of lacks, like it, it, it's, it's almost a little bit too gimmicky. Meaning the art is amazing and the fact that you can create these little, um, you know, Dixit-like cards mm -hmm. is, is, uh, is excellent. But in terms of the core game, if you strip everything away, it is an okay game. Yeah, I fully agree it's a, with you. Yeah. Um, especially if you like compare it to other very light games like um, you know Sagrada maybe I would go as it's as low as Potion Explosion. So to me, Potion Explosion isn't that light. 
let's not get into that uh, conversation again. <laughs> but um, um, I yeah, I mean, like, uh, like I was being I think cheated on. No, no, yes. no. I think it's it's probably like I'm trying to think of other light games like this one, like Lotus or you know other sort of pattern matching games. Mm-hmm. And I felt like in those you had just a little bit more extra punch because things felt a little more cohesive or a little bit more even limiting in some cases. So I think it's a very good game. It's just not, you know, it's not groundbreaking in any way. Um, the presentation is what, you know, lifts it up. Oh, for sure. Uh, a few notches. Um, but uh, yeah, and we'll talk about recommendations in a second, but uh, God, what do you think? Yeah, so I think that the objectives are really good. I mean, the fact that these are the medium objectives, right? There's not the We actually points. took random cards, but oh, I did okay. uh, wanted to combine, like we said, position and um, um, specific icons and Which so on. Which they recommend in the medium difficulty. Yes. Yeah, so... so Standard, I think they call it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I guess if we took it to the highest, more, the highest difficulty, it would be a bit more challenging. Mm-hmm. But I totally agree that there's not much variance in the game because of... Uh, what you can do is kind of limited. I mean, if you could make a painting with three to five mm. images, maybe, or if you'd have uh, right these two or three ones, then you have a bit more variance of what you can do, and then it'll be a bit more interesting. Maybe if there more was more than three rounds, mm. uh, it yeah. had a kick to it. But it kind of feels like you're sneezing and it's gone. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's super fun, super casual, uh, something to bring to a picnic. Yeah. All right. So in terms, of, like I said, in terms of recommendation, you know, if you like, I mean, personally, I'm very much drawn to the theme, right? That's what made me click the the back button mm-hmm. in, in Kickstarter. Even I think if it would have been like a generic fantasy or sci-fi theme, I wouldn't have taken it. Uh, uh, but, you know, the theme itself uh, drew me in. Um, so I think that if you're looking to, you know, bring this to friends who are very very casual and would like the the um, the theme that would be great and i think like we said earlier even kids i mean uh younger see, younger even players kids. I think uh, even this kids is would mainly run. for younger players yeah. yeah yeah i i i would agree yeah yeah so uh yeah if if i can compare it to something and this this is not an argument no. <laughs> this is not an argument you say but i think that this is something that's around the potion explosion level of difficulty i find potion explosion to be a lot more entertaining and a lot more tactile and fun but it's around the same area of uh here's a game with a really cool gimmick that will keep kids entertained and when we say kids, we mean like... Teenagers, I whatever. No, I mean... Small children. 7 to mm-hmm. 11 or 12. I think anyone who's over 12 will probably have outgrown the level of complexity of this game very, very quickly. But uh, yeah, you can take it to friends, you can take it to like a family, family dinner and not be worried about someone ruining your cards because there's very little... Like anything that's easy to ruin is already sleeved. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, that's that's the extent of mm-hmm. the recommendation. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It's, it's not a very warm recommendation. It, the game knows what it is and it does what it does well, but it's uh, it doesn't do anything else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Got any summarizing thoughts? No, Final I think thoughts? you got covered. Right there. All right, you did try. you have fun? Yeah, I had a lot of fun. All right. All right. So maybe we'll see you in more videos. For sure. All right. Gloomhaven next time. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right. So uh, links down below for the uh, overview and first round as well as the extended playthrough. We hope you enjoyed this review. And stay safe. And we'll see you guys next time. All right. Bye. Bye.